while Victor's working on that. I read a story the other day that I figure I'll share with everyone. It's something I read that led me to ask myself a question. So I'm going to bless y'all with the story and also leave the question on the table for y'all to answer for yourselves. So the story is actually about a father and son. They're at an airport and they're coming home from vacation and they're standing in front of that big glass where all the planes you could see and they're watching their plane pull up and they're loading it up and they're just, you know, outside looking at all the planes and the child looks up at his father and he says, Dad, how big is God? And the father looks at him for a minute and he, you know, he thinks about his answer and he, he says to his son, he goes, look up in the sky there, son, do you see that plane up there? And he says, yeah, I see the plane. He says, how big is that plane to you? And the son replies, it's small, dad. I, it's so small, I can hardly even see it. It's so far up in the sky. And he looks at him, he goes, how about the plane we're about to board? How big is that plane? And he looks at him, he goes, it is huge, daddy. It's humongous. I mean, it literally takes up everything I see. It is so big when I'm looking at it. And the father looks at the son and says, God is the same way. The closer you are to God, the bigger he is. Now, the question I ask myself that I leave with you is, how big is God in your life? Is he a small dot in the sky that you pray to sometimes when things ain't going your way? Or is he so engulfing that no matter where you go, no matter what you touch, he's there. You see him and you, you bring him everywhere. I asked my question and asked myself that question after, how big is God in my life? And I'm not trying to have you feel, wait, if God is not so engulfing to you. I'm just saying that if he's not, and I'm talking to myself when I say this, it just means we have room to let him grow. The closer you are to God, the bigger he is. I have walk-up music today. I do have walk-up music. <laughs> I know we're still troubleshooting, so maybe we'll do some announcements right now um, instead of waiting. Woohoo! Joe, I appreciate the enthusiasm. Thank you. We need that right now to pump it up, right? All right, so this is usually Pastor John's uh, uh, job, but I'm going to do it this morning because I know he's back there troubleshooting the tech. Um, Joe, I'm sorry I'm uh, kind of messing you up here, but hopefully we have some slides. Oh, Joe's right there, so Joe, Joe. Um, so we have some announcements. Um, coming up next week, um, we have the Father's Day barbecue. So if you haven't heard about this, we're doing a barbecue um, after service uh, for Father's Day. You don't have to be a father. Um, you don't have to have your father here. Um, anybody is welcome. We're just going to have a good time and barbecue out there and celebrate um, the fathers in our lives, whether they're our biological fathers or someone who stood in for um, a father that wasn't there, or even if it's just our Heavenly Father, doesn't matter. Um, we're going to have burgers, hot dogs, all the sides, um, and some fun and games, too. So I hope everybody will come um, over to the community hall afterwards. Um, if you want to help out with that, we would love that. Write that on your connection card if you want to bring a dish or um, help flip burgers or whatever the case may be. Uh, just write that on your connection card. We would love that. We haven't talked about connection cards yet, but that's to come still. A little bit of foreshadowing there. So, um, uh, Other announcements that we have going on. Uh, help me out, Joe. What did I have on there? I don't have a newsletter. I should. Allie can, oh, I'm women's breakfast. Great, great call. Thank you, love. I'm going to steal this for a second so I can remember. Uh, Women's Breakfast is coming up on the this Saturday. Oh, my gosh, I didn't put it in the newsletter. Look at me. Uh, Women's Breakfast is coming up this Saturday. Uh, we are where this month? Where? A1. Well, okay, so A1. A1. All right. So Women's Breakfast alternates between um, the Haverhill location and here in Newton. So we're in Haverhill uh, this, this month. Um, and so that location, if you haven't been there before, is above A1 Deli, right in downtown Haverhill. There's a nice parking lot right across the street. Uh, that's our Ray of Light Recovery Cafe location. And so ladies, I hope you'll join us there. We are at 9 a.m. Um, and there's always some great food and uh, fellowship. So I hope you'll, you'll come and join us there. Um, Heart of the Father Life Group is also this Saturday. Huh? No, next Saturday, sorry. 
Crystal's, uh, Crystal's shaking her head. No, no, it's not this Saturday. So it is the Saturday after that. So that is June 24th, and that's at the Plastow Public Library. That is a ladies' life group um, that Crystal runs right there. Crystal, wave your hand. So if anybody has any questions, woo, Crystal, yay. If anybody has any questions about that, um, it is an awesome group of ladies. So um, anybody who would like to join us, we would love it. And that is at 10 a.m. again at the Plastow Public Library. Um, there's also a whole bunch of dates to note in your handout, so I would just uh, recommend you take a look at those. Uh, July 30th, we have the Ray of Light Cornhole Tournament. All right, so we got some flyers for that. That's over. That's in Gar Park, right? Oh, Salisbury. I'm sorry. You're right. So we're going to be at the Salisbury Reservation having some cornhole and a whole bunch of fun. Um, uh, August... Yeah, it's a real tournament. Like, there's rules and everything. So, <laughs> prizes, prizes and rules. So, come, come to the corner. <laughs> um, August 3rd through the 5th is um, Soul Fest. If you haven't been to Soul Fest, it is an incredible uh, Christian music festival. Um, it has typically been up at Gunstock Mountain, but they have brought it closer to us, which is great news. It's at the Topsfield Fairground. Um, if you haven't gotten tickets yet, we have gotten a block of tickets. They may or may not all be taken at this point, uh, but if you're interested, write that on your newsletter, and we will uh, get in touch with you. Uh, Just Worship is also playing at Soul Woo Fest. Woohoo! And everything is working now. And we just got our uh, date and time, which actually may be news to some uh, worship team members because I haven't told everybody yet, but we just got it yesterday. So we are going to be playing Friday, um, which is the third, and that is going to be at, um, no, is that the third or is it the fourth? Sorry, fourth, sorry. Friday the fourth at 345, I think it is, at the Inside Out stage. Um, so everybody just mark that on your calendars. If you're planning to come to Soul Fest, definitely come and um, help us out and, and cheer and uh, be in the crowd for us there. Um, August 16th is our Just Worship uh, Salisbury concert. Um, so if you haven't been to that yet, Salisbury uh, Beach, there are Christian concerts um, at the, the, the little um, just beach boardwalk area there. They set up a stage, and there are Christian groups there uh, every Wednesday night. So I'd encourage you to go check out any of them, but especially go check out on August 16th because uh, the worship team will be there. It's always an incredible. It's one of our favorite events um, every year, and we are going on first. There's two groups that go on. We are going on first, so we'll be on around 645, I think it is. Um, so come on out and uh, support the team and have some really great worship there. And then August 20th is our Just Church Beach Baptism Bash. It's a, that's a mouthful there. Uh, that is also at Salisbury Beach, and we do baptisms right there in the ocean, and it's awesome. Um, so if anybody is interested in be cold. being, it is, it is a little bit chilly, um, but, but that's okay. We, we brave the waters for you. Um, and so if anybody is interested in being baptized, please put that on your card. We'll be in touch um, and just know that we will not be here that week. We will be over at Salisbury. Again, we do a barbecue. We eat a lot in this church, so we'll be, <laughs> be doing a barbecue. Again, we'll have games and everything there, and it's a really fun time uh, for everybody. And then last but not least, um, we have September 23rd is the Ray of Light Jericho Walk. That one is... In Gar Park. Okay, I got that one. Um, so that, that is a walk um, that is now being organized by Diana and, and Jen. Jen's working on that one as well. Um, and there'll be more information to come on that one. Um, but it should be a great, great time. So I hope you'll join us for that. How are we doing tech-wise? Because I've been talking for a long time. Yikes. I guess we're okay. We're good. All right, so let's stand up and worship together. Let's raise a hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. Oh, raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy.
Sing it out. Sing a little louder. 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 Oh, sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. Come on, sing a little louder. We're not sitting. We're not sitting. We're praying to go right back into worship. Just want to say good morning. Welcome to Just Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this morning, this glorious morning. Lord, we just want our praises to be uh, pleasant to you, Lord. Just receive our worship today, Lord, and allow these voices to go out into this world today in song and after this just sharing your love with those around us, Father. Help us to share, bear, and encourage one another and those around us with your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. If you've been slave to some, just know with God's strength, all chains are broken. No matter how heavy they feel, no matter how tight they feel they're attached to you, with his strength, all chains are broken. You are no longer a slave to the things that held you down and held you back because God is on your side. And Almighty God has the strength to go above all things. Oh, hold on, we're going to run it back, my bad. With the melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all 
the soul Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Why is there, there's another one? Yes. <laughs> I know, it seems like a lot. Thank you, one. Jesus. Don't Keep worshiping. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yo, if we ain't fun, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just to add on to that no longer a slave and how these chains are broken, it's because you are not alone. There was another in the fire. There was another with you. Maybe in the times that you're at your lowest and this world has got its foot on your neck, you might feel like you're not alone. But that's just the enemy bringing a dark cloud so you can't see who's really there. But check your heart. Check your heart. Because you'll feel them there all the time. And the times that you were lost and this world ran you over and put it in reverse and ran you over again. Hold close to your heart because God is there for you. He's going to pick you up every time. You fall. You stand up with his strength. You fall again. What do we do? We stand up. We never give up with God's strength. That's what it's all about. Filling yourself up with his love and giving it to other people. Amen. Don't Amen. hold it for you. Give it to everyone else. They need that same feeling Amen. that you have. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. He who was and still is and 
will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. I know. I know. goodness oh, let's give it up for that worship team Woo! huh guys so that was God humbling me because I made fun of Victor's shirt I said he bought it at the kids section today so that was <laughs> so that was God humbling me saying hey listen buddy remember which time you're supposed to go up and after the songs you can count to two it's okay. After the second song, you go up, James. It's all right. So I am Pastor James. I'm the discipleship pastor here at Just Church. I have the honor to bring to you guys the connection cards. Guys, um, this is a great way for us to keep in touch. If you notice, Pastor Rachel had a list of things that are happening. We are a moving church. We like to have fun. We like to eat here at Just Church. Uh, if anybody that was at men's breakfast, uh, men's breakfast yesterday could, could actually... Stand as a witness, that would be wonderful about the amount of bacon that I cook. <laughs> it's, all right, I only cook four pounds, and they kind of were like, oh, James, what's going on? Next time I'll, co I'll cook a lot more. It's okay, guys, it's okay. Yeah, right. Um, so this is a great way for us to keep in touch with you and let you guys know the events that are going to be coming up because we want everybody to be at our, at, at our events you know, we are a church. We're a church family. We do things together. That's how we actually create community. That's how we grow. That's how we learn about each other. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. All right. All right. I'm killing it today. I'm killing it today. <laughs> I haven't even stumbled more than once. Well, maybe a couple times. That's all right. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the confidence in me. I appreciate it. So uh, next is if you want to join a life group. This is the spot to put it. Um, if you want to um, serve, this is also, you can check off the box on the back of the card. It's a great way to get in touch with, um, it, well, not really in touch as much as becoming part of the church. You know, you don't want to just come to a church. You want to be a part of the church. Correct? Coffee. Coffee. Makes sense? James. And, yes, coffee. 
Oh, coffee. So, <laughs> thank you for bringing that up, Pastor Rachel. Um, we have a ministry. Who likes coffee here? All right. We have a ministry for one of you people. Or more. Or more. Or more. Or more. Not just one. We could, you know what? We're, we're looking for a plethora of people. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I learned it today. It was wonderful. Um, we are looking for somebody to get here a little early, not that early, and make the coffee. Guys, you know how I was talking about somebody's a 10? Anybody, everybody's a 10 at something. If you don't like to talk to people, this is a great ministry for you. You make the coffee, and you run and hide in your little corner. And then you say, I did God's work today. And you did. You did kingdom work. You know why? Because there's a lot of people addicted to caffeine. And you are supplying that to them. No? Should they go to Celebrate Recovery for that? Well, we're going to give them more coffee. Oh, no. <laughs> That's horrible. All right. I understand now. But, guys, this is a need here. And this is where you can step up. And you know what? You might be able to make the best cup of coffee in Jesus' name that I, I'm never going to drink it because I don't drink coffee. But somebody will drink and be like, I'm, I'm going to come back to this church because of the coffee. I mean, come on, guys. You could be a kingdom changer right here. You could have co Listen, I don't want to add too much to them. Iced coffee. Look at this. Maybe we should have a coffee committee. So on this card, I want you to write coffee <laughs> if you want to be part of that ministry okay because we really truly do need it we need the we need the coffee and you know what I don't want to put it or we don't want to put it on somebody that's already doing stuff so guess what if you're already volunteering you don't get to do it this is an opportunity for somebody that is not helping out already to step up does that make sense? Perfect. That was Hulk Hogan right there. Yeah, you like that? All right, I'll get off now. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this beautiful day outside. Lord God, I thank you for all the people that decided to wake up and consciously come here to worship you, God. Allow us to take something away from this message. Lord, allow us to apply this this week to our lives. Lord God, allow us to be focused and to be active listeners to your word and to your voice today. Lord, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And Amen. here's Pastor Rachel. That is not the right song again. I sense the link. That's not it either. I'm not going up till I get my right walk up music here. I sent the link. Ah. I get knocked down. There's a not great word in there, so we have to take it down pretty quick. So. <laughs> good morning, good morning. So if you're, if you're visiting with us and you don't know what that's all about, we decided a little while ago that I needed some walk-up music because there was like a little awkward transition there. And so if you're a baseball fan like me, you know that every time a batter comes to the, to the plate, they have their own little walk-up music that they walk up. It's to get them pumped up and everything. So I get my walk-up music. So we're auditioning songs right now. That's one of them. The one we did a few weeks ago was uh, Michael, I want, Jackson. Michael I was Jackson 5, I Want You Back. And at the end, we're going to give you guys a chance to vote on which song you like the best for my walk-up music. And then we'll keep it around for a little while, and then we'll change it up then. 
So here I am. I'm Pastor Rachel. It's great to see all of you today. I am so excited to be back. As you guys know, Pastor James was here last week. I heard great things about his message. So thank you, James, for kicking off our new sermon series that we are calling Emotions. So this is our second week in that series. And we are going to be covering um, a kind of a grouping of emotions today. Because we started out last week talking about how Jesus shows us in the Bible that he experienced and expressed a broad range of emotions, right? And God gave us these emotions. We're made in his image. But the key is that we need to learn how to interact with and react to these emotions in a healthy way. So today, like I said, we're looking at this group of emotions, and every single one of us experiences them at one time or another, and that is fear and worry. Okay? Now, we did a series back at the end of 2022, if you were with us, last year. I know it seems like forever ago at this point. But we did a series called Peace of Mind. Um, if you weren't with us and you want to catch that series, I think it was a really great series, and a lot of people um, really related to it. Um, and it was around October 2022, so if you want to look back and listen to those messages, you can do that on our website, YouTube, uh, Facebook, whatever. Um, and really what we were talking about was straight talk about Christianity and mental health. And we started trying to break down these myths that as Christians, we won't struggle with mental health. Recognizing that just because we love Jesus, just because we pray daily, just because we read the Bible, just because we come to church every single week, it doesn't guarantee that we'll experience perfect mental health. And it's the same thing as our physical health, right? We love Jesus, but that doesn't mean we're never going to have physical ailments. And sometimes we need to recognize that, and we need to use some of the tools that God gave us, like counselors and therapists, and sometimes maybe even medicine if that's what it takes. And so today we're going to talk through some things that are similar to what we talked to in that series, but a little bit different. Because in that series, as I said, we were focused on mental health issues specifically. But today we're talking about emotions. And that is very different. Because for someone who experiences severe anxiety or depression or another mental health issue, that can be crushing. It can be debilitating, and it can rise to the level of a serious medical condition. But today we're talking about emotions. We're talking about feelings, all of which are valid, but we, and we need to experience them, and we need to acknowledge them, but we need to intentionally work to address them, as I said, in a healthy manner. And so as I said in that previous sermon series, if you are with us, I am not a medical expert. I am not a mental health professional. I'm a pastor. And so we're going to talk today about how we experience these emotions from a spiritual standpoint. And I think it's important for us to acknowledge that not all of us experience those emotions in the same way. But we all, at one time or another, have certain levels of anxiousness, of fear, of worry. And wherever you are on the spectrum, I just want to start off by saying, God cares about you. God sees you. Wherever you are, he walks with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And I want you to know that he wants to walk through those with you, whatever you're experiencing. And I'm not just making that up. If you look in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. Now, that having been said, worry is a real issue for most of us, if not all of us, okay? And uh, you know I love my stats, and if these sound similar, they're the same stats I used last time, but they're applicable here. According to the World Health Organization, Americans as a culture deal with worry more than any other people in the world. Now think about that. We are the most affluent country in the world. And we deal with worry more than any other culture. 
So congratulations, yay us, we're number one, right? right? We're the winners at something that no one ever wants to win at. But based on these current statistics, if you're in the normal range, if you're an average person, you probably had some difficulty maybe getting here today. And even right now as I'm talking, you're probably having trouble focusing on what I'm saying. Because there's something in the back of your mind that you're thinking about, something that's gnawing at you, something that is worrying you right now. I'm getting a little ring in my mic. Are we we're fixing that? All right, I'm just going to keep talking then. So today we're going to unpack this and we're going to try to understand what's at the core of this constant state of worry and how best to manage these emotions of fear and worry and anxiousness. So here's a good starting point to recognize that we're all born as sinners that we are all imperfect people who live in an imperfect world. When we, when we encounter a difficult situation or a situation we're not familiar with or one we're not comfortable with, our default is often fear. Our default is often worry. Our natural tendency is fear instead of defaulting to faith. And God knows this. This is not a shock to him. And he's given us scriptures to rely on to know how to handle that. So let's look at some scripture to unpack this. Great way to start. And an even better way to start because this is the words of Jesus here. So we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 is where we're going to start. We're going to, we're going to work our way all around chapter, chapter 6 here. So in verse 25, he says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. So we start out with this verse. What does it say? It says, therefore, and whenever we say, that's right, whenever we see therefore, we get to ask ourselves, what's it there for? Because that means, hey, listen up, I'm going to say something important here. So he says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry. Now I want to break this verse down because I think it's easy to misinterpret this verse and the verses around it. So before we do that, I'm going to back up actually to verse 24 where Jesus says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So in this verse, verse 24, Jesus is specifically talking about money. But as we jump back to 25 and beyond, it becomes clear that this isn't just about money. It's about the eternal versus the worldly. And so it's broader than just one topic like this. It's about the things that are temporary versus the things of God, which last eternally. And if we break this down even further, we really see the brilliance of these verses that Jesus weaves together to address what are probably our top worries, even today, on most of our minds. So as I said, we already have verse 24, no one can serve two masters, yada, 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 money. And then we go to um, verse 27. And Jesus says here, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And then if we skip down to verse 31, he goes on and says, Do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So when we really think through what Jesus is talking about here, see verse 24, as we said, this is money. So he's talking about finances. Pretty big worry right there. Verse 27, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? What's he talking about here? He's talking about our health, our mortality, worrying about what ails us, worrying about that diagnosis that we just got. He says worry cannot add to your days in any way, shape, or form. And then verse 34, 31 to 34, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, 
Here he talks about our basic human needs, food, sustenance, or what shall we wear? Think about the importance of this to many of us, our personal appearance, fashion, other people's impressions of us. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about the future. So not only is this practical in its application, because we all deal with, deal with worry and fear to a certain extent, but it's also really powerful, because Jesus knows what our core fears are, and he addresses them one by one here. So we're going to go through those. Food. Some of us may never have actually had to worry about where our next meal would come from, but some of us may have very well may have not known where we were going to eat or how we were going to eat. And when Jesus said this to that particular crowd, they probably were worried about where their next meal was coming from because they were poor, really, really poor. And so some of us have had to have that worry about food, about, about being able to sustain basic human needs. And some of us may have worried about food on another level, counting those calories and worrying and, and stressing about every single thing you put in your mouth. And how much calories does it have? How much fat does it have? And I get that all too well myself. But Jesus goes on to say, don't worry about your body. Don't obsess about your health. Yes, take care of yourself. But again, the body is temporary. Your primary focus should be on the soul. He says, don't worry about what you're going to wear. And that's hard for many of us. Concerned about our personal appearance, about what other people think of us, about how many likes we may get on Instagram or Snapchat or, or uh, TikTok. Just think about it. If we spent as much time focusing on God, and seeking his will and his guidance as we do on our personal appearances, on our social media, man, that would be a game changer. That could change the entire trajectory of your life. And Jesus says, don't obsess about those things that are temporary, but instead focus on what is eternal. He says, don't worry about those things that won't last, and don't let, miss this. This is important. In verse 34, he says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough worries, enough troubles of his own. And as we said already, this is about being worried about the future, but it's more than that. It's about not spending time and energy being fearful or worrisome about something you cannot control. There's a saying in the business world, control the controllables. Everything else you got to let go of. And there's a saying in recovery, just keep your own side of the street clean, right? That's it. That's all you're responsible for. You can't control other people. Keep your own side of the street clean. And he says in verse, 30, in verse 26, excuse me, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Now, it's easy to misinterpret this verse, so let's be careful here. Jesus is not saying, God will take care of your every need. You don't need to do anything. He's going to feed you. He's going to clothe you. He's going to take care of everything. You don't need a job. You don't need to do anything. He'll provide. Just trust him. That is not what he is saying. But he's saying, when birds get hungry, guess what happens? They get up out of the nest, and they go, and they find their food. They're going to go forge for a worm or a bug or whatever it is that bird happens to eat. And God provides that worm. God provides that sustenance. But the bird doesn't just sit there and wait for the worm to come to him. He doesn't sit around the nest and worry, what if there are no worms? What's going to happen? What if there's a worm shortage, right? Global warming, there's no worms around. I don't know what to do. And this illustrates a very very important distinction about worry. Worry focuses on those things that are often beyond our control. 
It steals our present joy for a future possibility. And it causes inaction often in us. We get paralyzed because instead of doing something about it, we just keep worrying. And that's why Jesus perhaps asked this question, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? In other words, you worry, but has anything ever gotten better just because of your worry? Has anything ever changed just because you're stressed about what could happen in the future? Jesus says it's not helpful. It doesn't change anything. When you worry, nothing gets better. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes there are times that we feel stress. And that stress can actually be good. And that may seem strange. But healthy stress helps us to focus on challenges. It moves us to action. It helps us to focus on something that we actually need to do. And it can move us towards a potential solution. Maybe you have a big project due at work or at school, and that good stress helps you to work towards finishing that on time. Maybe you don't feel right physically. Good stress tells you, hey, I gotta call the doctor. I gotta see what's going on. That's not worry. Worry means that when you have that project, you lie in bed all night worrying about it not getting the rest that you need to actually be able to perform what you need to perform. It means maybe that you sit there playing Candy Crush on your phone or, or whatever it may be because you're procrastinating because that worry is overwhelming you rather than moving forward with what you need to do. Worry is when every single headache is a brain tumor, and you spend, year, you spend hours and hours and hours on WebMD, which probably confirms that it's a brain tumor, okay? That's worry. Good stress moves us to action. Worry causes paralysis. It holds us prisoner in the what ifs. It holds us prisoner in the worst case scenarios, and it will steal your joy, because it also will steal your ability to rely on God fully and fully believe that he is faithful and that we can trust in him. As we said, verse 26 says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow, they don't reap or, store, reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? When we waste our time and energy worrying, essentially we're saying, God, I'm not really sure that you're with me. I'm not really sure that you're for me. I'm not really sure that you are who you say you are and that you're faithful and that you're good and that you'll show up when I need you. And you may think that that sounds judgmental, but just know this. I might have been awake at 2 a.m. last night worrying about this message, worrying about what I'm going to wear today, worrying about how you'll receive it, worrying about all the work that I have to do during the week, and a hundred other things that were busy stealing my joy and my sleep. I'm vulnerable to it, just like everybody else. God, protect that motorcycle person right there. And here's something that is so important to recognize. Often what we worry about the most reveals a couple of things. It reveals, number one, what means the most to you, and number two, where you trust God the least. And often, they're the same thing. And if we continue reading in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gives us the key right here in verse 33. He says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Whenever you're scared, whenever you're worried, whenever you don't know what to do, whenever you feel like there's too much to handle, what do we do? We seek him first. We seek his presence. We seek his goodness. We seek deeper relationship with him. Seek first comfort from our creator, from our heavenly father. Seek him, and then everything else 
will be given to you. Because experiencing fear or worry isn't something to be ashamed of. You're not a bad Christian if you're fearful or worried. It's actually a signal. It's a warning that there's something that needs to be explored and addressed. Think of it like a check engine light in your car. How annoying is that sucker when it goes on, right? And how often do we ignore that, right? But if we ignore it for long enough, what's going to happen? That engine is going to stop working eventually. Because we think it's going to just go off by itself, but that's usually not the way it works. And we don't just throw the car out because the check engine light goes on, right? We go and we try to find out what's wrong. We weren't made to handle our worries by ourselves. God will never leave you. He will never forget about you. He's just waiting for us to bring our cares and our concerns to him. Take it to God. Take it to God. Take it to God. We weren't designed to handle this on our own. And that may just mean saying, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I'm just hanging on to you. Some of you have heard this powerful prayer, what I think is a powerful prayer. I learned it when I was in seminary, and you wouldn't think it's a seminary-level prayer, but let me tell you, it's I'm here, you're here, we're here together. And that's it. That's all you need to remember sometimes. Earlier I quoted 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, give all your concerns to God because he cares for you. And Peter here is actually quoting a psalm. And the psalmist is facing fear and anxiousness. And he cries out to God. And I'm sure many of us can relate. And this is Psalm 55, starting right at the beginning in verse 1. Listen to my prayer, once you can hear it. Oh God, do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught. Because of what my enemy is saying, because of the threats of the wicked, for they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Who can relate to that? My thoughts trouble me because of what my enemy is saying. Gossip, division, hurt, abandonment, often the roots of our worry. My heart is in anguish within me. Oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. How often does that flight instinct take over? If I can just get away from this situation, if I can just get away from everything, I'll be fine and I can rest. But many of us can probably attest that that's actually not the answer. Because the thing is, oftentimes our worries follow us wherever we go. And running from our worries generally does not solve anything. But the psalmist goes on to pray things like, death, take my enemies by surprise. Okay, well, let's skip down to Psalm 55, 22. Here's where he says, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. And he ends up in verse 23 where he says, but as for me, I trust in you. And there it is. God, I don't know what to do. I'm in anguish. I'm pouring out my heart. Hey, could you just give my enemies that surprise death right there? Oh, but you know what? I trust in you. And I want you to know that each one of us can go through this process, and that's healthy to work through these emotions and by faith just take it to him. If it's on your mind, it's on his heart. If it's big enough for you to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Take that burden to him. Because here's the thing, that thing that you're worried about, 
one of three things is going to happen. The first thing is it's never going to come to pass. It's not even going to happen. In fact, there was a study. You know I love my studies, right? They had these people come in, and at the beginning, they told the researchers what they were worried about. And then 30 days later, they came back. And nine out of 10 of them, what they were worried about has never come to pass. That's 90%. But here's the thing. Worry will steal your joy 100% of the time. So that thing may not ever even happen. The second option, it happens. Well, it's not as bad as you thought it was going to be. You know, we build things up in our minds. We think, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is going to be the end of the world. And it happens, and the world goes on. Maybe that project you did for work didn't really go that well. Maybe that project you did for school didn't go as well as you wanted to. You got to be, you got to see. Yeah. It's not what you wanted, but you're still here. And probably at work, nobody really cares all that much. You just do better the next time. It's a learning process, right? Whatever it happens, it may come to pass. But maybe it's not that bad. And then the third option, maybe it happens. And maybe it's devastating. And you know what? God's still there with you in it and through it. And maybe it's an opportunity for us to draw nearer to him. Because oftentimes, those things that take us the lowest have an opportunity for us to go the deepest with him. To rely on him. Because again, Often those things that we worry about the most are the things that we trust God with the least. And we have that opportunity to go deeper with him and know more and more of who he is and the power that he can have in our lives. So today is an opportunity to start walking that out with him. When you feel that worry, that fear welling up inside you, Recognize it as a valid emotion. It's a signal to take that situation, to take that fear, that very thing that's causing you that anguish, and take it to God. Believing, maybe for the first time, that he cares for you, that he's listening, and he is with you. No matter what happens, he is in control. And in all circumstances, he is good. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your promises in your word. We thank you that even when we have times of fear, or when we have these times of worry, of anguish in our souls, that you are there, just waiting for us to release those burdens to you. That Jesus came and he died on the cross so that we would have freedom true freedom. And God, I just pray that we would recognize that when we worry, when these burdens hold us down, we're putting ourselves back in a prison that Jesus came to free us from. Help those words to penetrate our hearts so that we know, even though we may go through troubles, we may walk through deep waters, that God, you are always there with us that you are always in control. And that doesn't mean that bad things won't happen, but it means that you will never leave us, that you will always be right there with us, that you long for us to bring those burdens to you so that you can give us comfort and a peace that surpasses all understanding. God, we thank you, and we praise you for that promise. May we remember that throughout all of our days, and go to you first. Seek you first. We thank you, we praise you, we give you and you alone the glory that you are worthy of, and we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so now is our offering time. Is it still me? Looks like it's still me. Okay.
Um, so you should have an envelope in the seat back in front of you. Um, we here at Just Church uh, do our offering during our service, as many other churches do too. Um, but the reason we do it here is not just that it's convenient because you're all here, but it's because we believe that giving is an act of worship. It's an act of giving back to God just a little bit of that which he blesses us with. And so if you choose to sow into his ministry here, we are incredibly grateful, but we ask that you do it with a joyful heart. And if you don't do it with a joyful heart, then don't do it. And if you're visiting with us for the very first time, there is no cover charge here to be in church. We just ask you to let that offering go right by you today and just be our guest. Um, in a minute, um, Dawn and Kristen are going to come by with our very fancy uh, Just Church buckets, and they're going to collect our offering. And you can also take your connection card and put that right in there as well. Um, and we are just so thankful um, to have you all here with us today. And we are going to worship God through music one more time. So if you want to just, oh, I'm going to give Bean two seconds to get up here. <laughs> And we're going to stand and worship God through music. My sorrow and dead in my sin. I'm lost without hope with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given to me. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. For oh, your grace of free washes over me. You have made me new now life begins with you. It's your Change, I'm a prisoner no more. My chain was a ransom paid for the My castle, my death.
darkness rejoice as though heaven had lost. Oh, thank Jesus for us with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested in my today that we can truly live in that freedom we thank you and we praise you and we lift all of this up to you in the name of god our father in heaven in the name of god and the person of jesus christ who died on the cross for each and every one of us and in the name of god and the person of the holy spirit who lives with and in us at all times amen and amen as always, it's an honor to worship with every single one of you. Love you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Oh, we're free, free.